Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we've got three big stories and uh, I'm just excited to bring it to you. First up, Mass Mutual joins the Bitcoin Club with a $100 million purchase. And this is just one more story of a big organization getting into Bitcoin because no one wants to be first, but nobody wants to be last. Also, Curve partners with MetaMask to help institutions custody DeFi assets. First, we have to take a look at what exactly Curve is and why this is such a big instance for DeFi and what it means for the future. And then finally, on building on our story today, where we talked about banks FOMOing in, Wells Fargo, compares Bitcoin to 1850s gold rush and plans to increase coverage of crypto assets. And it is amazing to me over the last couple of weeks and months how banks have really taken hold of the cryptocurrency and digital asset space. And this is yet another example of why 2021 is going to be absolutely enormous. So we'll get in the market in a second, but just to remind everybody that 12 days of Christmas is going to start in four days. And we're going to give away all these great items. All you gotta do is just show up to the show uh, make a comment on the video and win. And I'll tell you exactly what uh, phrases or words I want you to comment. So uh, that is it. And it's gonna be a great time. I wanna thank all the uh, people and all the groups that actually came in and donated. I asked a lot of people and every single one of them said, yes, we'd love to donate for the 12 days of Christmas. So that is good. We will start that in four days. Also the D News Cardano staking pool just passed 5 million in ADA delegations. And uh, it's pretty amazing because we've only been doing this for less than three days and we're already here. So uh, thanks to everybody who has signed up. I really appreciate it. And if you're looking for how to actually stake, there'll be a link in the description that looks just like this. It's gonna take you to this handy dandy page. Just click on wallets and it'll scroll all the way down to the actual video, which explains exactly what to do. All right, let's get into today's market quickly and see what the heck is going on. So today it is December 10th. It is 1 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And here's what we got. So Bitcoin's hanging around 18.4. We take a little bit of a dip, but it's only up a half percent, so no, no big deal. Uh, Ethereum, around 5.60. It's also taking a slump. 58 cents for XRP. Watch out, Tether. Nobody cares. Bitcoin Cash is up a little bit, but again, not a big deal. Stellar up 3.6%. There's a great story about uh, Stellar accepting more stable coins. So that could probably be the reason. Bitcoin SV is still in the top 20. I have no idea why. Monero's up, that's good. Rep Bitcoin, yeah, NEM 6.5 and everything else. And then uh, look at Filecoin, up massively, 22. I mean, not massively, but 1.5% and 1.8 for the week. And there's some uh, really good information I didn't realize until I was in my uh, Trade the Chain account. And we'll go over that at the very last piece. But, but yeah, Filecoin, I think, is, is definitely one to watch. So that's what we have in the dollars. Let's take a look at what that looks like uh, as far as Bitcoin. And why we look at this is because we're trying to see if we would have invested in other altcoins, could we beat uh, Bitcoin? And if you invest in an XRP, <laughs> you'd have 4.6%, so good for you. Bitcoin Cash, 1%, and then, uh, well, 3.4 for Stellar. That's not surprising. Bitcoin SV, 0.3, all right. Point, eh, no, no. 6.7 for NEM, and that's interesting. Wrap Bitcoin, it's supposed to be the same price. So really it's the same thing, but uh, yeah, sure. It's just, it just wraps them in an ERC-20 token and uh, not a big thing. Uh, Filecoin up 1.7, but you kind of take a look and you start to go down. Actually, usually as you go down, you're supposed to be able to uh, sometimes see it, but sometimes you don't. And um, it's just a lot of the times, not every time, but a lot of the times, if you just invest in Bitcoin, you do pretty good. Now you can find those small cap gems and uh, you, you can make a killing, but you got to pick the right one. And they're kind of like penny stocks. I mean, if you're, if you're new, to the, new to this whole game, it's kind of like penny stocks. Just find the right one. You got to invest in like 10 or 20 just to find that one that's a winner because you got to make up for all your losses for the 19. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top stories. So this one, every time I see stories like this, it just reaffirms that uh, we were all right. We were right to invest into Bitcoin. We were right to get into cryptocurrency digital assets. I mean, I see where it's going. I know it's going to get there. The thing that I don't know is time. And when I see these types of big uh, entities getting into uh, crypto assets, I'm like, oh, it's going to happen a lot faster than what I thought. So Mass Mutual joins the Bitcoin club with a $100 million purchase. Wow. So Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance Company bought a $100 million Bitcoin $100 million worth of Bitcoin for its general investment account, the latest sign of mainstream acceptance. And yeah, I mean, Mass Mutual is, it's its a pretty well-known name. So when you have people, especially in the baby boomer era, baby boomer, baby boomer era, um, 
<laughs> and they're looking at like, ah, you know, what are people getting into? What is what are some solid investments? And they take a look at something like this where Mass Mutual is getting in, or like we're going to talk about Wells Fargo. They start to think about, well, maybe I should get into that because I tr I don't know what Bitcoin is, but I trust Mass Mutual. I, I don't know what you know Ethereum is, but you know I really do trust Wells Fargo, even though they shouldn't. Uh, and they'll get into it, and and that's just how it is. It's a it's a social proof, and that's really what it comes down to. Anyhow, the investment is a tiny one for the Springfield Mass based insurance company, whose general investment account totaled nearly $235 billion. Man, that's a lot of money. There must be a ton of money in, in uh, life insurance. So, Mass Mutual purchased the Bitcoin through a New York based fund management company called NYDIG or NY Digital, which has about $2.3 billion of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies under management. So, Again, a lot of these entities, they can't hold cryptocurrencies because it's not legal for them to do so. So they'll pay a fee. They'll pay a, you know, a pretty good premium just like um, with Grayscale. And they'll say, hold this for me and, and you know, 20%, no big deal because we're going to we're gonna go up multiples of, you know, 2, 5, 10x. We don't really care. And everybody makes money. Everybody makes money. Everybody's happy. Everything's cool until it's not. Any other company said the Bitcoin investment was based on a broad strategy to take advantage of new opportunities while remaining diversified. And they state this gives us measured yet meaningful exposure to a growing economic aspect of our increasingly digital world. See, they get it. And people are starting to get it. And they're starting to wake up. And it took a long time. I mean, it really took a long time since 2017. But now that people just saw the resiliency of the of just the crypto assets in general, all of them. I mean, at least the top, you know, 50 or 20, we'll say. Now they're going like, hmm, maybe this isn't something to be played around with. Maybe we should get into it. And Pompliano said it perfectly. He said, you know what? It's at one point, it's going to be detrimental to not have exposure to Bitcoin and you're going to really miss out. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, Curve partners with MetaMask to help institutions custody, custody DeFi assets. And this is something I never I never really saw coming. And this is just the amazingness of the space. When you take a look at what potentially could happen, you're like, well, how are they going to do this? How are they going to do that? And then this is just one of those things where they're going to take a Curve, which is really institutional grade custody, and they're going to combine it with MetaMask, which makes things so much easier to transact and move things. And they're going to combine both of those great things together. So first of all, you got to ask yourself, what the heck is Curve? If you don't know, it's an institutional standard, as they say, for uh, just for security or for institutions to custody any type of cryptocurrencies. But what's crazy about it is that they don't use private keys because they say that a private key is a single point of failure. And I have to agree, uh, they are right. Yeah, when you just have one private key, you're, I mean, we've seen this in multiple, multiple exchanges where you had one crazy owner who just had one private key for all the transactions and he either dies or gets arrested and everybody's money goes away. Well, Curve said, that's ridiculous. Let's get away from that. It's okay for Joe Blow and Jane Blow like you and me. But if you get into like people who are holding like, billions of dollars worth of cryptocurrency it gets a little dicey so how they do that is a little unclear to me i mean i don't know the exact dynamics of how it exactly works but to, to really break it down and make it simplifies this is what they say Curve uses multi-party computation or MPC protocols that leverage in independently generated shares of cryptographic material instead of private keys. This is done mathematically, distributed way to eliminate the single point of failure, and blah, blah, blah. So here's really what happens, right? You have multiple people throughout the whole industry. Let's say you have a C CEO, a CFO, a CTO, a CFO, or whatever you want to say, whatever title you want to give it to them. You can have as many people as you want to. And however you make it in your industry, you say, look, we need six signatures or we need 20 signatures or we need three whatever it is we need three ways for people to sign to log in to put their computational information in so we can transact and move these cryptos if all these people don't get together it does not happen so there is no single point of failure and that's how curves doing it so to jump back what they're talking about here is that you get all the enterprise controls security audits and everything that you great that's great with curve but with metamask in one click you get integration with all the DeFi protocols. This is coming from the, the CEO of Curve. And he states, a DeFi protocol can, can become valuable in a matter of seconds or minutes. We've seen that, especially with how fast this moves and how DeFi moves. From what it emerges, so you want to have the ability to access new protocols as soon as possible and not wait for your custody provider 
to integrate with that specific protocol. So what they are saying right here is that they can integrate at pretty much the speed of light. They don't have to wait for all these checks and balances, all these different things. They can go, you know what? We want to get into that. We want to use that. We don't have a bunch of programmers. We're going to absorb that and MetaMask is going to help us do it. So what could this mean later on? Well, as more things are being made in DeFi and more institutions want to get um, exposure to that asset this is what they're going to go for so uh if you don't have any stock in curve maybe i don't even know if they're a publicly traded company but if they were that would be something to look at uh, financial advice just saying all right let me know what you think in the comment section let's move on to our last piece so wells fargo we meet again wells fargo plans to increase coverage of crypto assets so that's great i mean look uh we had actually covered this in today's earlier video. Actually, we didn't talk specifically about Wells Fargo. It was about uh, BBVA Bank, which they are going to get into cryptocurrencies and buying and holding and custody, all that stuff. And what we do these days, uh, well, we actually gonna do something new, which is we do little snippets. I, I try to do like little pieces and they're less than four minutes. And I just talk about pretty much the big story of the day. And I thought, I feel like this is the big story of the day. And then yesterday we did a story about how Facebook is going, coming on, under fire against 48 of the state legislators or 48 of the state attorneys, excuse me. And they have filed a lawsuit against Facebook for violating antitrust laws. And what they're saying is they want Facebook to be broken up. And we talked about how that would affect uh, Libra, I mean, excuse me, Diem as, it, as it's called now, which I'm just here to tell you, it's gonna crush it. So I didn't know how people would take to it for them being so short, but so far people have loved it. I mean, under four minutes, I kind of, you know, get, I kind of condense as much as I possibly can. And it gives you the, the, the most bare bones stuff. So uh, we'll keep doing this. We'll probably do a small snippet in the uh, early morning hours in the US. I don't know where you're at. And then later on, we'll do a, a longer format like we're doing right here. But anyhow, in that whole article we talked about this morning, it was all about how banks are just getting into crypto because they have to. And it was something that Mike Novogratz said. He goes, look, banks are getting pushed into this space, not because they want to, but because they have to. And if they don't do it, they're going to get blockbustered and they're all going to be out of business because this is what people want and this is what uh, people will go to. And Wells Fargo sees the writing of the law and that's why they put out this little report. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyhow, multinational financial giant Wells Fargo says Bitcoin's 12-year history and performance as the best performing asset of 2020. First of all, it's the best performing asset of the decade. They need to really get get up with the times uh, and not just say, oh, it did pretty good this year. It's been doing good for the, like the past decade. And in all honesty, it's the best performing asset class of all time. It's beaten every stock, gold, silver, oil, everything. So when they start talking about, eh, it's not bad 2020, eh, whatever. So but it, it really doesn't matter what what really their conclusions come up to. Uh, we know what it is, and that's what's important. I wish that they would uh, inform their audience a little bit better, but hey, nobody's perfect, right? So they state, if you feel left out of the gains, don't. The chart highlights that Bitcoin has indeed outperformed gold and S&P 500 index over the last three years, more than that. But look at the volatile journey Bitcoin investors had to endure to get there. And they are right. Uh, if you're watching this with me, you've probably been around the game for quite some time. And this is how you know you've earned it. Because you can't just come in and just you know show up with no ticket and get on the bus. It doesn't work like that. You got to go through the ups and the downs. You got to go through the dips and the valleys. And, and you did that. And so just enjoy it. All you got to do is not do something stupid like, like sell everything. So just be aware that they want your Bitcoin. These big players want it. So just uh, keep your hands strong. Lastly, it states cryptocurrency investing today is a bit like living in the early days of 1850s gold rush, which involved more speculating than investing. Over the past 12 years, cryptos have risen from nothing to $560 billion in market cap, and fads don't typically last 12 years. Talk to that economist Nobini, whatever his name is. The guy who hates on Bitcoin all the time and says it's a bubble. He's been saying it's a bubble for like the last seven years. Moron. Cryptocurrencies can become investment worthy one day, though. Uh, there are good reasons for this, reasons that every investor should hear. As we roll in 2021, we'll be discussing the digital asset space more. It's upside and downside. That's a bunch of the malarkey. What they're doing is they're just preparing their customers to go, hey, guess what? 
we're going to start to have some Bitcoin, but we'll custody it. But you can have it. It's paper Bitcoin, but you don't know the difference. So you're going to buy it anyhow. And that's really what it comes down to. This is uh, the actual report, uh, Wells Fargo Com Investment Institute. And if you just do a quick search for Bitcoin and they just talk about the same thing we just said. But it's good to see that these entities are really getting into it and they actually understand that, hey, if we don't get in this now, we're going to be left way behind. But I would like to remind you, you and I know how Wells Fargo operates. But if you're new to the game and you don't really realize, just remember who you're dealing with. Wells Fargo had a nice little scandal not too long ago where they created millions of fraudulent savings and checking accounts on behalf of Wells Fargo clients without their consent, on top of other things they've done in the past, which have been a little bit shady. So don't think that they have your best interests at heart. You need to do your own research and you need to make sure that you're making the right choice and don't let these guys dictate exactly what you should be doing. Just me on my soapbox, very sorry. And that's it. So, hey, thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. Also, there was a thing about Filecoin that I was I was going to talk about at the end. And this is what I was going to say. Trade the chain. If you don't know, they use sentiment analysis. So there's technical analysis. There's fundamental analysis. And trade the chain uses sentiment analysis. And what they do is we know that that this market is moved a lot by emotion and a lot by news and knee-jerk reactions, let's be honest. So when you get something that is uh, recently listed or there's some kind of talk about mergers and acquisitions or there's some kind of like partnerships, that will usually pump up the price. There's a lot of data that, to support that. So what Trade the Chain does is they have these bots that scour the whole internet. They take a look at all the different things that are going on. On top of they have, they are one of only four crypto companies that has a direct API into Twitter and they're crawling that all day long, all these billions of tweets. And what they find is things like this, uh, Filecoin now available on Coinbase at 1140, which I'm like, okay, that, that could be a reason for a little bit, but this is interesting. Filecoin is launching at blah, 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 and on the iOS and Android apps within the next 15 minutes. That was today at 11.39 a.m., and we saw a little bit of a peak. I think because of the, these types of things, also on top of like the different things where it says like, hey, this is getting listing right now. So if things get listed, usually it goes up. And all the different things that it talks about, this is what makes Trade the Chain great. And it, what's interesting is that it's not just stuck here on the internet so you can go check in. They have a Slack app and it's integrated into that. So it gives you alerts when all these things are coming about. So if you want to know like all the new listings, well, that's what Trade the Chain does. It crawls all those blog posts, all the exchanges information, their websites and everything, and also the API for Twitter because sometimes they, they tweet things out and it gives you the information a lot faster than what, what people normally will get the information at. So if you want to take a look at Trade the Chain, there's a link in the description below. It looks just like this. And you can check it out for 14 days. And if you don't like it, there's a uh, no questions asked uh, money back guarantee. So can't beat that. So give it a try if you want to. Uh, I have a membership there. I like it and uh, kind of cues me on things that are going on. All right, so that's it. Thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, the two more is going to pop up on your left and right. I'll let YouTube do its magic. And that's all. So I will see you on the next one. Bye.